So it has been a quiet minute. I was meaning to get back to my regular content schedule. However, I came down with the flu. So go get your flu shot because it don't play around. And I was out for a couple of weeks, but now we are back. And it just so happens that we came back at the perfect time for some juicy little drama. Well, I can't even really call it drama, honestly, because it's not really drama more than it is just a learning lesson from both sides of the spectrum, from both the recipient as well as the deliverer. I'm talking about the pink sauce woman situation. Little Miss Veronica Shaw, AKA Chef P, TikTok sensation for the pink sauce. Why this is a lesson about one, why not everyone can be a boss bitch or an entrepreneur or a business owner. And two, the sunk cost fallacy. Why Dave's Gourmet should have cut things off from the get-go, why they never should have bought this sauce, why they never should have tried to work with her, and what exactly the sunk cost fallacy has to do with this situation that the company of Dave's Gourmet has found themselves in. Now, a couple of really quick notes. I'm not a lawyer or anything. I don't know what goes on inside. I'm just a dude over here on the internet giving my opinion on the situation, but I think it's a fairly educated opinion based on my own experiences. So for those of you who are under a rock and somehow have not heard of this situation, which I don't know how you haven't, but just in case, Veronica Shaw was a woman on TikTok that made a pink sauce that she made using dragon fruit and some other artificial stuff, including like mayonnaise and milk and a couple of other things. And it went viral on TikTok because, ooh, pink sauce, that's super quirky and different. I want some. So she ended up trying to make this pink sauce available for sale and it sold out within hours. And she ended up shipping really nasty, bad batches out to people. I'm talking like it was rough, like probably salmonella floating around in there and botulism and just foodborne illnesses all around. Packages were exploding and things were getting really, really messy really quick. This is where the absolute saint of a company, Dave's Gourmet, comes and steps in. Dave's Gourmet offers her a contract to permanently, now this is going to be important for the upcoming, for later in the video, Dave's Gourmet permanently bought the rights to create and distribute Pink Sauce LLC, and Veronica Shaw, in exchange, would just be responsible for advertising, posting like three times a week on Pink Sauce on TikTok, as well as processing customer refunds for any time a customer wants a refund. So then from August of 2022 until the present day, Pink Sauce was available for order online, as well as from January to July of 2023, Pink Sauce was available in over 4,300 Walmart locations, as well as on the Walmart's website as well. So that contract's done and ended, and that doesn't really have too much to do with the story because most of the story involves the interactions that happened between Chef P and Dave's Gourmet. So initially, just off the start, Dave's Gourmet paid Chef P $45,000 to be able to sell and distribute her pink sauce on her behalf as long as she covered advertising, posting on TikTok three times a week, and covered refunds for any customers that wanted a refund, which sounds super simple. They make the sauce, she advertises and refunds. Happy partnership. And then after a few months, Dave's Gourmet noticed that there was an unusual backlogs of refunds that needed to be processed. But when they got in contact with Veronica about where's the money and why are all these refunds not going out to customers, she mysteriously didn't have the money set aside to cover the refunds that needed to be given out to customers. That's a little strange straight off the bat. So then Dave's Gourmet was generous, to say the least, and paid her $30,000 to cover the refunds that she should have already been responsible for according to their contract. A few months after that, in the fall season, 
Veronica was all of a sudden struggling for money financially again. And Dave's Gourmet was even more generous at this point and was like, okay, look, we understand this is your first business. We understand life happens. We understand that sometimes things fall apart. So they gave Veronica cash advances that totaled well over $40,000 and they didn't even charge her any interest or fees on those advances. A few more months later, in February, she then suddenly grew absolute brass balls and asked for a further $11,000. This wasn't Dave's Gourmet offering. She was requesting a further $11,000 to throw a birthday party and buy a dress and shoes that she can wear for TikTok videos. Now, obviously, this doesn't have shit to do with the business, so Dave's Gourmet finally said, no, we are not granting you $11,000 to throw a birthday party. And then shortly after this, Veronica mysteriously started distancing herself from the company. She suddenly wasn't attending meetings or attending brand deals or attending anything that related to the company. Why would she suddenly distance her involvement in the company after being told no? That's so strange and weird. So after that, things really started taking a tumble down. And right around the time that Walmart discontinued their pink sauce sales, which was right around July, she started actually making even more demands from Dave's Gourmet for more money for more ridiculous things like personal expenses, non-business expenses, shoes, sneakers, hair care, nails, anything to do with herself and not the business. And of course, Dave's Gourmet denied all of these attempts to process these into like business related tax credits or whatever, whatever. And then in August, she suddenly, again, so suddenly, fell behind on rent and was in danger of being evicted and needed $14,000 to pay off those past overdue rents. How do, how, how do you fall behind? How do you get a landlord that lets you fall behind $14,000? Where, she's not, she lives in Miami. Miami is not as expensive as New York or the Bay Area or Orange County. It is expensive, but I can't imagine anywhere that you would live in Miami unless you're living in like states like East Side Miami where you only have villas that are over a million dollars. I can't imagine any realistic scenario where you would be needing over $14,000 in late due fees for rent. It's, it's wild and mind boggling to me. And yet Dave's Gourmet agreed to pay this. So now Dave's Gourmet has sunk a further, further $14,000 into this woman. So you want to know what she did? She thought that this contract that they signed, well, I mean, I think that what she thought, I'm not saying that she thought this, but what I think she thought is that this contract with Dave's Gourmet was only a yearly contract. So she grew real big balls and asked them for one and a half million dollars to continue her relationship and partnership with Dave's Gourmet, which obviously they denied. They said, fuck that. You signed the initial contract that you signed with us was evergreen, eternal. You sold your company to us. We own the pink sauce rights. There is no annual contract. So get out of here with that rubbish. Dave's Gourmet was just, you know, absolutely going wild at this point. So then she made another odd request of $250,000 after that. And then when Dave's Gourmet said no to that, what did she do? She's in danger of being evicted again. She's lost all the money again. And now she can't feed her kids. And now she's in a corner with nowhere to go. So suddenly, after receiving well over $130,000 at this point, not even including the royalties, so what does she do? 
She does the modern woman standard and cries wolf. And she goes on TikTok and claims that Dave's Gourmet was stealing her brand and trying to corrupt her company and taking away her legacy and stealing money from her and denying her her royalties. When in the contract that they signed, it's clear as day that she only gets paid X amount of royalties based on gross profit because it wasn't very clear and there wasn't very much history to show how well and successful Pink Sauce would be as a sauce. So that's why she wasn't getting very much in royalties and that's why she was overspending and, under, and getting under, underpaid according to her. And that's where all of this rolled into the GoFundMe that she created for $100,000. She created a GoFundMe for $100,000 because reasons? I don't really know what, what exactly these reasons are in her GoFundMe page. I mean, they all look like absolute rubbish to me. There's no like plans here of what this money is going to go towards. There's nothing about Dave's Gourmet in here. There's nothing about why she needs this much money. There's nothing about where all this money is going to go. There's nothing of use in here. And she's still demanding that she get $100,000 off of the community. This is a scam. At this point, this woman is just operating a scam and trying to bleed Dave's Gourmet dry of all the money that they have saved up. Which, mind you, at this point, the exact amount that Dave's Gourmet has paid out is a total of $161,449.37. In one year, she made $161,000, which is bonkers. And somehow she still blew through it all. I don't understand. I will never understand how you managed to do that. Even in upstate New York, or Orange County, or the Bay Area. I will never understand how you can go through $161,000 in a single year. I digress. What is this show about the modern woman issue? Being a girl boss, doing whatever you want without consequences. Nobody can tell you what to do. Nobody can tell you how to be. You can just go around and do whatever you want, girl. The fact is, is that business is business. All right, when you sign contracts, when you have lawyers with you, when you have a team with you to go through the contracts with you and both parties have all the means necessary to understand in written language and verbally so there's no misunderstandings and no miscommunications and you spend hours each time, each meeting going through and understanding the contract and asking questions and verifications and doing everything that you need to do and you still screw up this bad. It's intentional now. She is intentionally feeding off of this company. And she's going to say, no, 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 I'm not. And they're screwing me out of money. They're, they're not treating me fairly. They're not giving me royalties. They're not doing this or that. But that's just crying wolf. And very soon, these wolves are going to actually come down the road and hunt her down. And she's going to have nothing left. And you want to know what the worst part about this is? This isn't even entirely her fault. This is just the result of what a lot of conditioning of being terminally online does to people. Being this terminally online to where you are brain rotted to any kind of consequences that are related to business or related to life or related to relationships or anything of the sort, if you've never had experience with that and you think you could just go around being the main character with no consequences and just run around with cheats on and being able to kick that chicken without any consequences, you're in for a rough time. And she's going to be in for a really rough time because Dave's Gourmet is not going to continue this relationship for much longer. They have sunk over $161,000 into this scam of a sauce and this scammer of a woman. And that's something else I want to cover is that the sunk cost fallacy is truly unreal. So real quick, the sunk cost fallacy is when you think, well, I've already spent $100 on this game. I may as well continue to play it because I've already invested money into it. Or I've already lost $300 on the daily three bets. So when I do eventually win, I will win my money back 
And before you know it, you've lost $700 and you've won $200, but you've stolen the whole $500. That is the sunk cost fallacy. You keep doing the negative thing that's destroying you because you've already invested X amount of time or money into it, even though it's not healthy or good for you. That is what Dave's Gourmet is doing with Veronica. They are giving her way too much money, way too much time, and way too much leniency for what she's been doing and fucking up. She just hasn't been in the right game and mindset to be able to handle something like this. This is not her space. And this is also not Dave's Gourmet responsibility to keep paying off her debts and her things too. Dave's Gourmet, in my opinion, should have cut shit off after the second cash advance and she still needed money. They should have said, this isn't working out. Um, you can handle the sauce on your own. We don't want anything to do with pink sauce anymore. They should have cut it there. And they would have only been out $75,000, which is still a fuck ton of money, but it's not over $161,000. That's less than half. But you see where I'm going with this. Recognizing when to end things, no matter how difficult it's going to be or how optimistic you're going to be about how maybe it'll turn out well, you need to learn to read the fine lines and be able to see when something isn't working out and it isn't for you, you need to cut that shit out. You need to move on from that. And Dave's Gourmet is a prime example of what it looks like to be too deep into the sunk cost fallacy before it's too late and now you're out of a lot of time and you're adding lawyer fees and it's frustrating and now it's just a whole mix of really bad goop that could have been avoided had they just ended things earlier. They could have seen all the signs and red flags from the very beginning about how this wasn't going to work. And they still invested in it anyways because they were super optimistic about it for some reason. Shit like this, dude, just goes to show how bad these modernistic, womanist, feminist movements are fucking up this generation and next generation for genuine serious business owners because there's so many of these veronicas out there that will never understand how to run a business or how to be an entrepreneur because now she's going to be spending the rest of her life trying to replicate a pure chance once in a literal lifetime event and she's never well, I'm not going to say never, but she's probably never going to recreate this success that she's had, if you want to call it success, with pink sauce. And she's going to be spending the rest of her life stuck at the bottom. It happens all the time. People that experience a sudden burst of a success without any financial literacy will not succeed with that money, no matter how much money they are given. It will never work like that. I'm talking a lot longer than I wanted to on this subject, but it's just such an interesting subject matter that I could talk for hours on. If you're interested in that, then cool. Maybe I'll upload like a part two to this video where I talk more about like my thoughts on the modern movements and like modernization of stuff and everything because I'm more of a traditionalist and a conservative myself. But with all that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And once again, source materials, links, and stuff in the description below. And subscribe to my channel if you're interested in further content from me. And yeah, I just look forward to seeing you around, bro. So take care, have a good day, and a good night.